because there is this concept of the Palestinian arms struggle in of itself that it is somehow attached to Islamic fundamentalism. And if we went through last month's 11-day uh, conflict, as it's being called, the only thing that we heard out of that in terms of the Palestinians and uh, their fight against the Israelis was that Hamas was involved and that Hamas rockets were being fired. And that somehow this is to do with a radical Islamic vision uh, that the Palestinians have, and this is what they are fighting for. Um, and you might hear some passing sort of uh, acknowledgement of a group called Islamic Jihad, which again is an Islamic group. Um, and so this is tied into this idea of Islamic terrorism, and that uh, somehow Israel is fighting against is Islamic terrorism. Um, and even the term terrorism in of itself, I mean, it's very hard to define this term when we're talking about terrorism, and often it's a very politically charged uh, term that uh, we're hearing. But what you might not have heard of what went on last month in that 11-day uh, fighting between the armed groups in the Gaza Strip and Israel was that it was not just Hamas and Islamic Jihad which were fighting. There was what was called the Joint Room of Armed Resistance Factions, which included groups like the PFLP and groups from across the political spectrum. Now, the PFLP is a Marxist organization. And so when we're looking at this and what happened last month, there was no mention whatsoever of the fact that there were nationalist Marxist people from across the political spectrum who were fighting. And this is a key point to note as they want to keep this, meaning the Western governments and media, out of the conversation completely. Because then it becomes a wider discussion about what this fight actually is and originally was viewed as and has continued to be viewed as by the Palestinian population. And that is a fight against a settler colonial entity which is usurping their territory. Now, and this does not mean that you have to agree with any of the groups or even armed resistance, but I believe that understanding the history of these armed groups is something that is very important. So going into some of this history, if we look back to when the armed struggle began in the 1950s, the 1960s, of course in the 1970s and 80s as well, for the majority of the 80s, Islamic groups weren't even part of the whole. In 1952, an organization was started by a Palestinian Christian named George Habash. Um, he started the Arab uh, Nationalist Movement. This was one of the most prominent Palestinian resistance movements at the time. Then if you fast forward later on to the late 1950s, Fatah, which is one of the prominent parties, maybe you've heard of them, uh, which was headed by Yasser Arafat, was created. Both of these organizations were secular. They had absolutely nothing to do with uh, Islamic fundamentalism, yet they were termed as terrorists. That's how they were presented. And this term terrorism that we're hearing used constantly to describe the Palestinians and their armed struggle was used throughout the history. And of course, back then, this was very much interlinked with what was going on during the Cold War. Now, these Palestinian organizations in of themselves were inspired at the time primarily by a man named Jamal Abdel Nasser, who was the president of Egypt. And the president of Egypt inspired this wave of Arab nationalism as the popular, uh, let's say, the popular movement to, uh, or anti-imperialist, anti-US uh, uh, hegemony in the region and Israeli uh, occupation uh, inside of the region. But when we came to 1967, Israel attacked with Operation Focus, uh, Egypt's Air Force and launched the June 1967 war in which Israel occupied the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, East Jerusalem, the Sinai from Egypt, and then as well on top of that, um, the Golan Heights of the Jolan uh, from Syria. At this time, this was a defeat of Arab nationalism, and this is what really brought Israel closer with the United States as well, because of course the Cold War was ongoing. Arab nationalism and its headman was defeated by Israel. And so that led to a sort of downfall eventually of these ideas of Arab nationalism as the popular movement and the popular struggle. And in that very same year, an organization was born known as the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, PFLP, which was created by George Habash, again, uh, who was the founder of the, one of the founders of the Arab nationalist movement. This organization, like I said, was a Marxist movement. And alongside Fatih, which uh, uh, it took over the PLO eventually, uh, yes, Arafat became its leader, 
the PLO as a grouping, like it, many different groups came into it, um, were secular. There, it was pretty much unknown Islamic groups at that time. But they, at the time, were presented as the terrorists. And the PLP was well known as being an organization which represented international terrorism. Uh, but today, because of the events, of course, of 9-11 and uh, Osama bin Laden and uh, Al-Qaeda and Daesh, we hear a lot of talk about Islamic fundamentalism, and that is what terrorism now is to Western people. But that didn't exist back then. So let's fast forward to 1917. Uh, Jamal Abdul Nasser dies, and this ideology starts fading away. But a new ideology has to come in order to fight, a, a, an ideology with which, with which to fight and to succeed against the enemy. This started developing and it really came in 1979 with the Islamic Revolutionary Government of Iran coming into power. They kicked out the Shah, a Western backed puppet who was installed by the CIA and, and the MI6 against the democratically elected uh, Muslim. Now, we will see as well with the Palestinian armed groups at that time what happened is that in 1970 they were kicked out of Jordan by the Jordanian regime. And there was really a massacre of Palestinians and members of the guerrilla groups. These guerrilla groups would use to launch attacks like rocket attacks uh, from neighboring countries and other incursions into Israel. Israel would do very much like it does in the Gaza Strip today. These uh, reprisal raids, as they were called, where they would massacre civilians on a scale which is not even comparable to what the guerrilla groups would do. Eventually, when they were pushed into Lebanon primarily, and they did operate somewhat in Syria, the Israelis focused all of their efforts there. In 1982, the Israelis entered into Lebanon, and they expelled the Palestinian armed groups, the PLO, and of course all of the guerrilla groups, were forced to leave Lebanon. And when that happened, what we saw is that the armed resistance in of itself was to an extent defeated at the time. And at that time, again, I want to stress no Islamic organizations in the exist. Now, when that happened, then we have to look and we fast forward to 1987. Now, and this is the Palestinian Intifada which erupted, which were the people of Palestine non violently resisting the Israeli occupation. Later on, we have the Oslo Accords. In 1987, that's when Hamas was formed, the organization Hamas. Hamas, at the start, didn't even have weapons, at the very, very start, in terms of its sand brigades being armed. Uh, they didn't really uh, factor into it until the early 1990s. And when that occurred, that's when we saw this uh, Islamic uh, fundamentalism that's coming against Israel narrative uh, that was starting to be pushed and now, of course, when we're looking at this as well, the Islamic Jihad organization, again, that was created in 1981, and of course, that was backed uh, by Iran. And then if we look out of that 1982 invasion of Lebanon, which forced the Palestinian secular leftist guerrillas out, uh, and later on with the occupation of Lebanon, we saw a group known as Hezbollah, or I'm not going to focus on this point too much here, but again, Hezbollah is the party of God, it's an Islamic party, which developed. But this did not come out of nowhere, this came out of a need of the people to fight occupation, to fight imperialism. And the most important thing to notice here is that when we're looking at an organization like Hamas, Hamas, its objective is to liberate Palestinian territory. Doesn't matter whether you agree with that or not, doesn't matter whether you agree with their uh, tactics, many people do not agree with their tactics, but to present them as some sort of a Biden-type organization or Daesh is extremely 